What's up guys, Corzy from Gaming Legit bringing you, uh, it's going to be kind of critique walkthrough gameplay of my own and then a more vigorous critique of SSGX. Uh, off of the spawn on sword base you're either going to be on 3B or you're going to be on 2A. I spawn on 2A and so the first thing I'm going to do is side in on the 3B ramp or the 2A to 3B ramp because normally people just start jumping off there to try to get the pro pipe, um, fail this jump, this lift is kind of off and on. <laughs> it's weird. I, I I don't get it. There's no like mechanics to it, and if there is, and I'm just completely oblivious to it, send me, you know, I'll, I'll leave a comment at the end of this video. I've tried to jump in it. Um, I've tried to just walk into it. It's just off and on. Sometimes it queefs on you, and you go only like two feet, and sometimes you launch straight to the moon. Anyways, uh, no team communication going on in this game. Uh, I kind of looked at my teammates. Uh, I was doing callouts, making callouts, but no one was really reacting to them. So the next step is just to locate where they are, where they're moving on the map, make a judgment call to the availability of the power weapons. I saw that shotgun was never approached, so I went over and grabbed the shotgun. Um, the next thing I do is, of course, I try to maintain top control as best of my ability. I try to focus on where my teammates are uh, putting shots on guys, getting shots. Um, if my teammates aren't having any shots on, I look at their location and assume that where they are is clear. And so I start looking at other parts on the map. You can determine a lot based on where your teammates are at around the map. And if you spread out well, um, it can completely change the game in favor of you. Now, I know I've talked briefly sometimes about the inconsistencies in the game uh, as far as the shotgun goes and some of the DMR shots. Something that I have found with the shotgun is that sometimes I'll get kills from like three feet away, even four feet away with one shot of the shotgun, but most general um, times I'm using the shotgun, I'll shoot someone from like the same distance. And normally it takes two shots to kill someone. Um, and I'm talking about guys with full shield, full health. Uh, so. I, you know, it gets kind of aggravating some, sometimes. This is kind of the stuff in the games that start to uh, uh, get on my balls, and I start getting really frustrated about that. I know there's not, you know, too much I can do. But um, if you could leave a comment to tell me, you know, because I found that awesome video of Woody's Gamer Tad that explained the headshots perfectly to me, so I fully understand what they're supposed to be. But if I could have the same thing done for some of the other weapons, if anybody knows any uh, channels that would give that kind of source of information and stuff, because right now, what I'm assuming how the shotgun should work isn't what I'm seeing in some other videos. So if you could leave that down, maybe in the comments for this video, that would be awesome. And so I follow up a kill to try to finish up a kill, obviously, and that guy stupidly stopped this. Uh, instead of going up yellow lift, he tried to take me on when he had no shield, and I didn't take a single bit of uh, uh, damage whatsoever. And so, finish him off, go up yellow lift, and then yellow lift room is like a death trap. And you, if you survive to get out of this, and you have teammates or enemies throwing grenades into this room or whatever, uh, you're, you're pretty lucky. I mean, it's pretty easy to kill anybody that's in this room. You bounce grenades off the wall or whatever. A lot of times people camp up here with the sword or the shotgun and just watch the lifts. That can get super, super annoying. But no, there is a way to get them out if you know that someone's there. Hopefully your teammates are communicating. If someone dies from someone in there, you got to call that out to your teammates. And just a simple couple nades will end the problem Im immediately. <clears throat> so I dropped down to 1B to finish up this kill. Because I saw that he dropped down, obviously. And I put several shots onto him. And uh, take the lift back up to 5B. It was a nice finishing move. And so what I'm going to do right now, I, I'm doing callouts immediately. Because they're going up from 2A to 3B. Um, and so I'm doing callouts. And I, I, I know on the next criti or the follow-up critique following this video, I'm going to talk about um, SSGX is, a, a, you know how he doesn't really get involved with this team shot and the reason why I didn't sprint down there and get involved with that shot for one I'm looking at the indicators abo above their head and I can see how much damage my teammates are taking versus them putting damage on enemies and I saw that there really was not any threat going on towards my teammates the other reason why I did not advance down to 3B is because I was the only one controlling top of 5B and I look over to 6A and so if I run down there and their team spawns up by 6A, then I just lost top control. And that's something I don't want to have fallen on me. Now, <clears throat> at the end of this, or you see that I've gotten a bunch of assists. I haven't died yet. People are going to start quitting. And right here, I get a medal I didn't even know existed. There it is. The assist spree. Pretty Game cool. I've never seen that before. You know, on that note too about the assists, before I get right into the critique of SSGX's gameplay, 
Um, just bear with me because I want to bring this up and to your guys' attention because I'm curious to see your guys' insight on this. Are, are, have you guys been noticing some weird stuff going on with the assists? Now, that's the first time I've gotten an assist spree, but I've played several games with subscribers and people even at my house gaming with me that have noticed that some of the, the assists aren't tallied or recorded as assists when they should be assists. An assist is awarded to you when you have taken over 40% of an enemy's health. But there has been several games where I take down in a person's entire shield and even get a couple blood shots on them and then I have a teammate that I do a call out on, turn the corner, put one shot into him to finish him off and then I am not awarded the assist. And I'm wondering why that is. Um, and if you can explain that to me in the comments, and it, it happens regularly, and it, it, I, I should have subscribers to defend me on, on this because I've played with several of you that have experienced this with me, and we've both been like, what the heck? Anyways, that's all I'm going to say about that. If you can leave some kind of answer or reply to why this would be happening uh, in the comments, that would be fantastic. So, this is SSGX, I've already said that, and SSGX, I'm going to... This might be a little bit of a harsh critique on you, um, but in the end, the reason why I'm saying it and bringing up everything is to better everybody else's game. Um, I'm all about teamwork and I'm all about team play. And a map like Asylum is so symmetrical that it forces gameplay to be very, very team oriented. Much more in comparison to other maps that let you kind of roam, roam around solo and you don't really have to worry about uh, um, getting overwhelmed and stuff like that. But in a map like Asylum, there's so much open space and it's so easy to get team shot that you really got to work well with your team. Any symmetrical map really, really makes it team based. And you, you can look at any map and you'll kind of go, you know what, that's that's right you know every symmetrical map that I think of if you're playing like a decent team you get pretty much destroyed but if you play an unsymmetrical map that's got like unbalanced power weapons you tend to be okay um, in comparison to the two so that being said I don't really notice too much teamwork going on in this gameplay I don't know if you guys have mics there's nothing I can um, really see to determine it but besides a couple things that pops up during the game that makes me or alludes to me thinking that you guys aren't really communicating and so I'm just gonna leave it at that I mean if I'm wrong I'm wrong I'm just gonna say that because there's no way you can defend yourself and come on right now in the middle of this commentary and go Oh, Corzy, actually, I was talking with my team. We were working together, blah, 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 blah. So I'm sorry if I'm wrong. I'm just calling it as I see it. I'm going to make a comment about your last death right there, too, because you just died because of a failed um, usage of the DMR. Now, the DMR, I find after watching MLG DC, Was or the Washington DC tournament, it was the Reach tournament. I think it was the first professional Reach tournament that has taken place so far. And the, the main focus of that tournament for me, and like the curiosity in it, was to see how the pros choose to shoot their DMR because I still find massive inconsistencies with this weapon. It seems like people are better off just spamming it and the less accurate you are it's okay because of how big the head box hit registration is and also on top of the fact that you have a bloom and so even though you're aiming straight at a person's head the bullet might stray a little bit to the side so if a person actually has a bad shot, it could potentially uh, register as a headshot. And more specifically, in coordinates to the fact of how big the headbox hit registration is. And I hope you guys watched that Woody's Gamer Tag video I linked in one of my Halo Reach videos a couple games or a couple videos ago rather. But I noticed from watching that MLG tournament that almost every single one of the pros spams their DMR. Every single one. Now these guys play on LAN connection, they don't play over XBL, and the reason for that is just, you know, for so you don't have to deal with all the crap that happens on XBL that prevents us from uh, having fantastic, perfect games non-stop. You know, it's XBL, it's over the internet, you know, there's going to be flaws, there's going to be problems with it, but they avoid that by playing over LAN, and LAN's just Xbox to Xbox, and a cord that goes between the two, it's not played over the internet. Um, but yeah, they spam their DMRs, it, for a lack of a better word. And so, I, you know, I tried it out myself. I'm like, you know, I'm just going to put away the pacing and just start spamming my DMR. Now, there is a nice blend between how you should be shooting your DMR between pacing and uh, spamming it. But overall, um, unless you have plenty of room to spare and time to wait to have that nice paced headshot. Oh, excuse me. You need to spam your DMR because I find more and more often I'm sitting there more worried about my accurate shot 
and while I'm sitting there waiting for my bloom to return for that perfect headshot, I get spammed out by the DMR, and so you don't want that to happen. So this has kind of been a long trotted discussion based on that kill you had a while ago from the guy rushing you with the shotgun, but if you would have spammed your DMR rather than trying to wait patiently for a perfectly paced DMR shot, you would have survived that battle and you would not have died. So spam away, and I know that's probably a lot, not what a lot of you guys want to hear, and I'm probably going to have a bunch of people go, what are you talking about, I paste my DMR shot all the time and it works out way better than the spammers. Um, I don't know man, I have a completely different experience and pretty much every single person I play with shares the same opinion as me. And I even watch the MLG Pro Reach tournaments, I mean these are fucking pros that make thousands of dollars playing this game, and they all spam their DMR. Another thing I need to critique you on is your uh, map positioning. You choose to be in your base and you never advance over with your team to the enemy base. Um, it's okay to do this tactic if you're working with your team and you guys are all on par and you choose to all sit in your base, but even that will fail. You need to advance and take over from the midsection over to your base and kind of push them or keep them in their end of the base. By you sitting on the bottom part of your base is even worse. And so you keep about 80% of your game over by the shotgun tunnel. Um, right now you're not currently at that. This is when you start getting a little bit more active and you start moving around slightly more. But being on the bottom of the map, first off, um, you just completely eliminate the option for you to be doing team shot with your teammates. And to put yourself on the top of the map, you just open up the map completely. You're now able to see blue base, which is the enemy's base in this game. Um, you're able to see the center of the map, and so potentially you could be doing team shot to help your teammates survive, prevent deaths for your teammates, maybe even help them get more kills and help yourself get more kills. And it seems like your passive gameplay is seem or it works in this game. But if you're playing against a group of uh, my friends and stuff, I'm sorry, man. You, the shotgun tunnel would not work for you. Um, it seems like you play so passively that you expect your teammates to drop everybody's shield and you're just kind of the guy that come up and clean up the kills. Like I said, every once in a while you step in, you start to get aggressive, but I'll just say this. If you want to become a better chess player, you got to play better opponents. If you never put yourself in the position to be beat by a better chess player, then you'll never grow as a player. And so, in relationship to this video and Halo, if you just sit back and never put yourself in a position to get into a DMR battle with someone that potentially is better than you, then you're never going to grow and expand on your own skill sets. You're not going to do that. By sitting back with a shotgun in your own base, in your own security, where you have plenty of walls and places to retreat from, if you lose health, um, you're not going to grow as a player. you got to put yourself in the position where you're working on your reflexes and all the in-game skills that make uh, the separation between really good players and uh, amazing players, basically. Um, like I said, I don't think there's a lot of uh, uh, team communication going on because it seems like you finish off quite a few of the kills and some of them are just lone wolves. Like right now, SBLD is putting shots on guy across the map while you're putting shots on a guy directly underneath him. You finish the kill, but it would have been very easy for that teammate to just drop over the edge and just do a team shot. Any team shot is a massive advantage. I mean, if you have a good team shot going on, you kill a guy in a matter of seconds rather than several seconds. It's crazy. Now, right here, you wisely duck around the corner to get away from three guys, but you sit here while your teammate is putting himself out in the open, putting as many DMR shots as he can on the enemy, and you just wait till he dies and just clean up all the work that he did, basically. And I'm all about team play, and that would have frustrated the shit out of me. So, of course, if you're gaming legit, or gaming legit, overall, you just need to improve on putting yourself in the position to help out your team. Peace out. God bless. Later. Uh, uh.